Well, Happy New Year, everyone. I want to congratulate you for your perfect attendance this year in 2022. You're here this Sunday morning, and, and this Sunday is really important whether you're tuning in or you're here personally, because what you're saying is, God, I'm giving you my first. And if you keep that pattern all year long, you're going to have a great year. There's always a spiritual fight for that top position in your life. And it's called priority. And as long as you keep God as your top, not a priority, but your number one priority, He promises you something. And I love the scripture. He says, seek first my kingdom or seek first me. Seek first my lifestyle. And then He says, all these things I will add to you. And what he's saying, make sure you're not put in the cart before the horse. And what he's saying is in that scripture, don't seek after things first and then me later. If you just seek me first, I'll add those things to you. What God is saying is I want to partner up with you. I want to help you. But your priorities and your motives and your heart is really important. We need to be careful that things, money, problems, health issues, letdowns, trials, temptations, difficulties, don't start, don't start taking over your relationship with the Lord. It's not easy. This year, there's going to be victories. How many believe in this year there'll be some victories, right? This year, there'll be some breakthroughs. This year, you're going to experience success. This year, you will accomplish which you've never accomplished this year. This year will be the year that prayers that you've made for years will be answered this year. This year, you're going to walk into your destiny. This year, you're going to walk into your freedom, not only for you, but you're going to lead people into freedom. Come on. You're going to get it. You're going to give it. This year, you're going to be more than a conqueror. This year, come on, this year is going to be your year where prayers are being answered, where you're being used by God. This year, this year. Now, I started off with a simple statement. This year, there'll be victories. Now, as soon as I said that, there is a shout. But I think we think there's victories without a fight. And that's where we get messed up. Because as soon as we start getting a little resistance, we start saying, well, I thought this year was a year of victory. Well, how are you going to have a victory with no fight? That's why we celebrate victory. Because to get a victory, you got to get through a fight. Come on. You got to resist. You got to push. The Bible doesn't say that this is a walk through the tulips. The Bible says this is a fight of faith. Is there anybody ready to fight for 2022? Fight in 2022. Come on, fight for your destiny. Fight for the dream. Fight for the vision. Fight for the family. Fight for freedom. Fight for peace. Come on, fight for your city. Fight for your neighborhood. Fight for, come on, fight for the hurt and fight for the broken. Is there any fight in you? Fights, you know, fight, fight. You know, we're gonna, I'm going to teach you how to fight. I've been created to fight. You've been created to fight. I'm just tired of losing. Come on. Anybody that's tired of losing, I, I just, nah, they, nah, I'm, and some of you guys have been knocked down a lot, but you know what? You're still here. Come on, you're getting up, and you're getting up, and you're getting up, and God says, just because you're not quitting, and you're still here, and you're still standing, is proof that victory is in your seeds. Come on, in your future. Now, we're going to, someone say, prepare for victory. When, when I think about, you know, let's say someone going to the Olympics 
and the years of preparation for sometimes it's a minute. Sometimes it's 10 seconds that are determining that gold medal. But they did not get a gold medal in 10 seconds at the 100 meter race. They got in a position to run that race. But many of them were training since they were little boys, little girls. And of course, they're on a podium one day. I got a gold. 10 seconds, one minute, one race. So this is all it's saying. There was a lot more preparation than you knew. And, and why am I saying this? Because in 2022, if you're going to have a great year, you're going to have to put the foundation of the preparation. Uh, I don't, I'm not interested in you being, I want you to be happy, I want you to have joy, and I want you to have peace, but I don't want you to be emotional. Because people are emotional, and it's okay to have joy, and it's at peace, and be excited, and we need that. But you got to be careful that you're only driven by emotions. Because if you're going to win some races and win some fights and get some breakthroughs this year, you're going to have to press through even when you don't want to press through. You're going to be consistent. Come on, showing up to church when you don't want to show up. Just like you did, some of you guys did today. Come on, it'll have been easy to stay home. So we're going to give you, some say process. So these are things we're going to be doing. We're going to start a 21-day fast Wednesday. Someone say 21 days fasting. I'm going to show you how to fast. We're going to show you how to fast this Wednesday. I want every one of you to show up. This should be our biggest service. All of us show up united, those that can make it, here this Wednesday night. And we're going to launch out a 21-day fast. And what we're saying is we want your presence over everything. We're, this, is, this is what we're doing. You know what, when you're fasting, you know what you're doing? It's clearing the spiritual atmosphere over you. What I mean by that is that there's demons that are trying to stop you from hearing God. So we're going to clear that whole atmosphere so you can start hearing the voice of God, the encouragement of God, the vision of God. So we're going to do that. That starts this Wednesday. I mean, this Wednesday. Then next, next Sunday, I'm going, to, I'm going to do a teaching, part two of this. I'm going to show you how to get vision and set some goals. Because if you, don't, if you don't know how to get vision, the Bible says people perish or they die out or they quit because they have no clear picture of a future. So this is what I want you to be able to define. This is how I want the, at the end of this year, this is who I want to be. This is what I want to accomplish. And I want it in written form. If you don't have the faith to write it down and get the clarity about your future, this is what's going to happen in 2022. It's just going to be a year of confusion. Without vision, people just die out and they quit. So they start off ambitious. It's going to be a great year. What does a great year look like? Be able to write that down. So we're going to get some, someone say clarity. So we're going to do that. Um, so we're going to, I, you got a gold card today. You're going to get that gold card and you're going to fill it out. And then that gold card, it starts off with some goals I'm giving you. Like one of them is how many hours you're going to serve a week. And the reason I say that is because you're called not just to receive, you're called and you have a purpose and you have a gift in to serve. Come on, serve. So if you don't set goals in serving, you won't. Number two, I have a goal on, on giving. And I've learned there's two ways to li live. You can live generous or you can live selfish. I just realized I want to be a generous person. And if I don't start setting goals to be generous, I just won't. So I want to set some goals that I, that I want to be a help. I want to be a blessing to people. So I'm going to set some goals and give it. Then we're going to have three goals that you're going to set. I want you to think about your top, I want set 20 goals, 30 goals. But and then knock it down to your top three and write them down on that, on, that, on that card that you have, card. And then at the end, write down one person that you believe in is going to be saved in 22. 22. You know what you're doing? Let's put a bullseye on somebody. And then you tell them, you know what? I put you on my card. This year, you, we put a hit on you. You put a hit on me? We got a green light from heaven on you. 
all the angels are coming after you. My whole church is coming after you. My prayers are coming after you. This year, you're going to get saved. Come on, have the guts to put somebody's name on there prophetically. Then you're going to get a word from the year. Say to somebody, word for the year. It might be like consistency. You write that down. Whatever the word is, be intentional. Fill that card out. Someone say, fill it out. Our goal is to get 5,000 of those cards filled out. This is what we're going to do. On January 30th, it's going to be Goal Sunday. Say it with me again, Goal Sunday. That's the last Sunday of the month that we're going to turn in our goal cards. You're going to turn them in, and this is what we're going to do as a staff. That week, we're going to lay hands on every single card and pray and establish and agree a blessing on you. There it goes right here. We're going to pray. We're going to log everything in here. We're going to believe with you. We're going to attach this to your, your name. And then that week, we're going to send a card right back to you. So you keep it in front of everybody. Put it on your fridge. Put it on your mirror. Put it in your car. Make some duplicates. Let everybody know, this is what I'm believing for for 2022. I'm not going to let nothing distract me. This year is going to be a great year because I already got a picture prophetically of what God is going to deliver to me. There might be problems. There might be difficulties. There might be trials. There might be letdowns, but it doesn't change. Well, it doesn't change what I'm believing for. Amen? So we're going to get to work this year. Holy Warriors, that's going to be next week. I mean, I dare you to show up next Tuesday. I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. We're going to go through some whole, some of us right now need some radical breakthrough. Holy words, I'm going to be with you guys for four weeks straight. And we're going to get everybody in tip-top shape as a warrior. You're going to find out what it takes to live for God 100%. Come on, we're going to get some sold out, all in, radical, on fire believers to go out there and reach this world. How many, come on, how many are with me on this? I need your help. Okay. We have some big vision this year. And I'm going and, and to give you, I'm going to start teaching you on goal setting, but we have big vision. And this vision this year that God's given us is, this is going to be the statement you're going to hear all year long. This is a statement. God's presence everywhere. Say it with me. God's presence everywhere. Say it again. One more time. Now, you might say, well, isn't God everywhere? Yes, he's everywhere. But there's a problem. People don't know he's everywhere. And there's a scripture that says, this is the problem we're having. He goes, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. But look what he says. Acknowledge me in all of your ways, and I will make your path straight. What he's saying, the problem is not that I can't save everywhere. I can deliver everywhere. I can heal everywhere. I can help everywhere. I can counsel everywhere. I can could, I could give peace everywhere. I can give joy everywhere. But the problem is they haven't acknowledged I'm there. So I'm going to use you, church, to let them know, make them aware that I'm there. And if you can make them aware that I'm there, I will manifest myself right there where people are aware. Come on. We're going to make, come on, San Bernardino, our neighbors, aware of God. One of the things that we're going to do, just one, one, and we're going to do a whole bunch. You guys are going to be amazed what we're going to do. We're, I'll tell you two things we're going to do. We're going to knock on every single door in San Bernardino. We're getting 60,000 door hangers. We're going to pray over them, put the gospel on these, on these, on these door hangers. If they don't answer, we're, we're, we're going to pray over every single door hanger so when we put it on there, it has an anointing to just grab them. Right? It's going to be powerful. We're going to bombard eventually every single off-ramp in the city. We're going we're gonna to take over the off-ramps. And we're going to have signs that said, Jesus said. Like Jesus says, do not fear. J Jesus said, be encouraged. Jesus says, love your enemy. Jesus says, forgive them. So everywhere they go, they're going to find out on every off-ramp, Jesus said. Come on. Jesus says, love your enemy. Come on. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. They're going to hear what Jesus said. So everywhere people go, they're going to hear about Jesus. We're also going to put in a million hours of community service this year as a church. Everywhere they go, they're going to see the way and Jesus. I don't want no one to, I never heard about the way. I never heard about you. No, this year you're going to hear about them. 
and that means miracles are going to happen. Let's give God some praise. This is just the beginning of what we're going to do. Let's bring it over here. We're going to pray. This card, don't lose it, because if you lose this card, you just lost your future. This is, besides the Bible, this is the most important card you'll ever touch. Because you're writing down the vision of God over your life. And if you can't write it, you can't receive it. I know, if you cannot write a vision from God, you're not in a position to receive anything from God. So I'm just saying, if you lose this card, you might as well throw away 2022. And don't come crying. All you have to do is fill out a card. You come in the middle of the year, my life's all jacked up. I go, Did you fill out the card? No, I didn't. I, I just didn't take it serious. So you didn't take your life serious? And then you wonder why you're lost? Starting off the year with no destination, no vision, and no clarity, and no passion, and no commitment, and no faith, and nothing you're believing for, and no... If you have no, 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 you end up with nothing, nothing, nothing. Praise the Lord. I know, I know I'm talking a lot right now, but I got to get you ready. I got 2022. We're going to prepare. Come on, like we're preparing for greatness. This month, January 2022, is going to be a year. Come on, a month of massive preparation for the greatest year we've ever had. Praise God. If this is your first time here, get ready to get some vision over your life. Father, we know everything begins with prayer. So we pray to you. Make yourself real to us. Open our eyes. No one here is an accident. Every person here you've given a gift, a purpose for. Set us free from our blind condition that we cannot see a future. Set people free from a spirit of suicide, hopelessness, depression, anxiety, and fear. All those things are a result of being spiritually blind, not being able to see something good is in my future. Jesus, you did not come to depress us, to take something that was valuable away from us, but you came to give us a new life, a new outlook, a new mindset, eternal life, forgiveness, purpose, dreams. You wanted us to tap into the impossible. And you said, all things are possible for those that believe. That we would be the believers and not be the doubters and not be the complainers and not be the blamers and not be the excuse makers. But we will be those that receive vision from Almighty God. Because I know you have vision for our home, for our families, for our, for our businesses, for our careers, for our finances, for our health, for our communities, for our cities, for our nation. May we be the people that get your vision and fight to see it come to pass. Yes. Speak to us. We'll receive your vision. And we will not get distracted. We want to get lost in the, in, the, in the fight, but we'll carry it out until it's completed. Jesus, you said in your word, my nourishment comes from doing my Father's will and completing it. May we get your will and be prophetic people that get insight about a future, words of knowledge, walk in your power, walk in your freedom, walk in your deliverance, that we would be a, a source of supernatural breakthrough. That your river of life will flow and bubble through us. That the world and their darkness will come to us and get some light and get some relief and get some freedom. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you about goal setting for a minute. And first of all, goal setting is biblical. And, and goal, this is what the Bible says in, uh, in Philippians 3.14. It says this. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul is writing, 
and he, he wrote a, a, a big part of the New Testament. He used to be a murderer. He used to kill Christians. He was an anti-Christ person. But he was converted. And then when he was converted, God gave him a new perspective. God gave him a dream. And, and he started saying, I forgot about the past. That old past is gone. And I've intentionally pressing towards a new goal that God has given me. Now, goal setting is this. It is the process of choosing where we want to go in life and the state, steps it takes to get there. You know what God, what God has created us with? He's created us with an ability to choose. You could choose a drug life. You could choose not to forgive. You could choose to be angry. You could choose, you could choose whatever you want to choose. But you all could, also could choose to follow God. You could also choose to dream big. You could also choose to have a bright future. You can choose your future. And if I can choose my future, why wouldn't I choose a bright future? Why wouldn't I just use my mind? See, some of us have been so used to using our mind for negative thinking, it's almost like you don't allow yourself to dream anymore. Because as soon as you start thinking about something good, you have strongholds that tell you, not for you. Now, look, look at what you've done. You don't deserve it. Stop it. You're going to be disappointed again. And if you don't shut down that type of thinking and start dreaming again and get excited about your future, a spirit of hopelessness, depression, and suicide will take over your mind. You are supposed to live a life of expectation. You're supposed to live a life of faith. You're supposed to live a life of belief. You're supposed to live a life knowing that your best days are ahead of you. You're supposed to live a life that knowing that God has a plan for good and not evil and hope in the future. You're supposed to live a life like God is with you because he is. Dream. Again. Brian Tracy, a motivational speaker, said this. Your ability to discipline yourself to say... Clear goals and then go to work towards them every day will do more to guarantee your success than any other single factor. Brian Tracy is just saying this. He's just getting this from the Bible. But if you just get some clarity about your, your future, it will do more for you than any other thing you could do in your life. Because you know why? You're going to look at your future with faith and hope and expectation. God is not going to let you down. But the Bible says this, that the devil else is out to kill, steal, and destroy. And, and it's a comparison contrast in John 10.10 10, uh, scripture. He says the thief is out to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come to give you a rich and satisfied life. Now think about that. He says you do have two options. Aren't you tired of the devil killing, stealing, and destroying your dreams, your hopes, your family, your process, your business? Everything, it seems like the devil's just ripping you off. And because you've seen such negative patterns, it's almost stole your ability to dream. And God is saying, you no longer need to live in that cycle of the devil. Because I've come to give you a new life with new endings, with new beginnings. Come on, I'm the alpha, I'm the omega, I'm the beginning, I'm the end, I'm the creator of the universe. And I got a vision for you. And it's to live a rich and satisfying life. So goal setting is biblical. We can choose our future. And this is a process. You, you get a vision. You write it down. Get a vision. You write it down. Get a plan and act on it. You get a vision. You write it down. You get a plan of action. And you act on it. If you do that, this year will be the most successful year you've ever had. They did a Harvard 
study, and in this Harvard study, they were studying their graduates. And this is what they found out. Only 3% of Harvard graduates wrote down physical goals on paper. And they said there was 13% of them that had dreams, visions, and goals, but they never wrote them down. But the other 80-some percent didn't have any goals. They were just wishing. And after years, they came back, and this is what they found out. The 3% that wrote down clear goals on paper, they got vision and wrote it down, were 10 times more successful than the other 97% combined. It wasn't that they were smarter. It wasn't that they had more potential. They just practiced a godly principle. Getting something from the spiritual realm and bringing it into the physical realm and putting it on paper. You can't even build a building until you get an architect. And what God is saying, I'm the author and finisher of your faith. If you'll just spend some quality time with me and a pen and paper, I will begin to download vision for every part of your life. And if you'll write it down, I'll give you a plan for it. And I'll give you the strength to carry out some action. And by the end of the year, you'll have the greatest year of your life. Say. And this is the reality. No, this fact. No goal will be accomplished without being intentional about it. So if you're not intentional about your life, that like you know where you're headed, if you don't put the GPS in your navigation, you're not going to get there. Because where you're going, you've never been. The first step you got to do is write down the vision. Vision is about your future. It's about something you've never accomplished. But I'm believing that with God, I could get there. And I'm believing that it's this year. And if you have the faith to write it, God has the power to help you get it done. How many believe that? Come on, do you believe it? I, what I'm sharing with you right now, people pay thousands of dollars on a weekend seminar to learn how to get a successful business, learn how to uh, build a successful church, learn how to build a successful family. How, teach me. And you know what they do? They tell them to visualize it. Write it down and meditate on it. Where'd they get all those fantastic ideas from? They got it from the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. And we as believers, we've lost our ability to dream. We're no longer visionaries. And we don't watch it. We're just as depressed as everybody else. I did not save you for you to live under the old mindset you used to live under. You, you were depressed. You were hopeless because you had no vision. But now you have the creator of the universe. He's living in you. And God has given you the Holy Spirit that will lead you and guide you to all truth. Wow. You know what the issue is? We're too busy doing, instead of taking time to get a download before we do something. Uh, I, I read something this week of our Warren Buffett, which is one of the most successful businessmen ever. And this is what they said about him. He spends 80% of his work week, work week, reading and thinking and 20% doing. What, what he found out is being busy doesn't mean that you're being effective. So that means you can work real hard this year, work like a busy little ant, and get nothing done. Be on a treadmill because you're working, a, working hard on a bad plan. You didn't get time for new vision, new wisdom, a new plan of action. And God is saying, in these 21 days, we are shutting down the world so I can get a message, a vision, 
instruction for to you about your family about your future about your health about your finances I have a plan for all of it is there anybody willing to spend some time listening and writing someone say be intentional fact no goal will be accomplished without a press someone say press just because you have a dream doesn't mean it's going to be easy he says, I press towards the goal. You know what? You're going to have to press through old ways of thinking, obstacles, negative people, fear, discouragement, trials, distractions, laziness, failures, setbacks, delay, and the temptation to quit. You've never had a real dream if you haven't had a temptation to quit. Every single great thing you'll ever do in life, before you accomplish it, there's going to be a demon of quitting that will try to stop you. It's not working out. It's not worth it. Look, you're ready. it's almost eight months in the year. It still hasn't happened. God says, there's four months left. Don't you trip. Just keep going. Look what the Bible says here. Look what the Bible says here about the promise. It says in Galatians 6, 9, it says, so let us not become tired of doing good. If we do not give up, the time will come when we will reap the harvest. If you don't give up, God is promising you that the vision will come to pass. The harvest will come in. The reward will be there at the end. With every vision that you don't give up on, there's a prize. I'm pressing towards the prize. Someone say prize. See, nothing great will be accomplished without a goal. And this is another fact. After a goal is accomplished, there will always be a prize. Someone said there'll always be a prize. Get a dream, get a vision from God, write it down. Get a plan from God, write it down. Then take action every single day. And when do you stop taking action? When the vision comes to pass. When you have the prize in your hands. I remember that one of the things that we wanted to do in this church was start a bus ministry. And I want to start a bus ministry, but there was a problem. We had no buses. But I had a dream and I had a vision. And what was my dream and vision? There was little boys and little girls who were hurting in the neighborhood. And I knew that those were they poor. They're more, their poverty was more than lack of money or lack of food. They just didn't know Jesus. And I knew if I gave them Jesus, they'd have eternal life. They could get the Holy Spirit, and they could dream again, and they could get set free and accomplish great things. But I needed to expose them to God and his people. And if I could get them on a bus, the moms and the dads in the hood would trust us with the kids. So I started praying. I wrote down, Lord, we need buses to bus the kids in. And that week, it was crazy. I was sharing, because it's not just getting a dream, it's writing the dream, and start sharing the dream. I started sharing my staff. I go, staff, let's pray for some buses. Because we got to get those little kids to the house of God. Let's go reach the ones that nobody wants to reach, and let's bring them in the house of God. A lot of those kids, they don't want them in no churches, but we'll accept them in our church, and we'll love them, and we'll help them, and we'll be their fathers, and their big brothers. We'll help them. Well, you know what happened? Within a week, I got a call from a local church that had a whole bunch of buses. I remember getting that call. No one knew we were praying for buses, but God knew, and he knew where the buses were. So you know what they did? They called me. I remember being at a staff meeting, and they said, we got some buses. We heard about your ministry. Are you interested in buses? I go, we're interested in buses. But I started thinking, we got no money, though. But I go, we'll set up the meeting anyway. So I went to the meeting. So I'm meeting with their, their chief financial officer. He go, he shows me a list of buses. And then I told him, uh, we have no money to buy no buses. He says, I didn't ask you if you had any money. I'm asking you which buses you want. I go, so we get to pick the prime of the litter. He goes, yeah, go out there 
and pick whatever buses you want. The ones you don't want, just leave there. And anyone you want, you want all 10, you can have all 10. Just let me know. Well, you know what we did? I, took, I think I took eight of them. The two of them were really bad. I go, nah, they don't even work. But if they were running, I don't care if they were smoking, we were bringing them to, that, bringing them to our church. And I remember we brought them, and five of those buses worked out, and we started our bus ministry. And we started picking up thousands of little boys and little girls. And this is how our ministry began. It began with a dream from God and provision from God. And all God saying, if you could receive it, if you could write it, and you could speak it, I'll help you do it. So what is a goal again? It's a desired result. Someone say desired result. It's a target, it's a prayer, which effort is directed towards. So it's a target with effort is directed towards. This is all I'm saying. If this year you're gonna put all kinds of energy, all kinds of breath, and you're gonna go through 365 days, what's all your effort aiming towards? Do you have a bullseye? Would you even know if this year was a success? You would not know if this year was a success unless you had some clear vision and goals you wrote down. So unless you write something down, you have no vision, you have no bullseye, and this is the idea. If you aim for nothing, you will hit it. The only limit that God has is your uh, inability to receive vision. Helen Keller, she was, she was actually a blind and deaf woman. And this is what she said. She said that what's more pathetic than anything is a person with sight and no vision. Just because you could see doesn't mean you got vision. And God is saying right now, if you'll just spend time with me, I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. And I'm going to give you prophetic dreams. I'm going to tell you about your future. I'm going to give you vision. Come on. I'm going to, come on. I'm going to, I'm going to pour out. And when I pour out my spirit, I pour out pictures of the future. When someone is full of the spirit, they're full of hope. They're full of dreams. They're full of vision. They're excited about their future. They are fighting for a victory. They see the giant, but they also see the giant defeated. Come on, they see the fire furnace, but then they experience Jesus in the fire furnace. They go into lion's den, but they find out that God is there with them too. Does anybody in this house want to get some vision from God? So now, I'm going to make this simple. Just two more points. What is a goal? Number one, a desired, desired future result. What do you desire? Say, desire? Will God give me the desires of my heart? Is that scriptural? This, I'm telling you this. If you love God, your desires are in the right place. Look what the promise says. Someone say promise. I love this. In Psalms 37, 4, it says, seek your happiness in the Lord. Seek what? And he will give you your heart's desire. He'll give you what? God will give you your heart's desire. I'm going to tell you this, guys. If there's any spiritual warfare, it'll be right here, right now. Sometimes when I'm talking about vision, and dreams, there seems to be a blockage that I'm fighting through because the enemy knows as long as you can't see, as long as you have no vision, the enemy knows by default you perish. God is not trying to hype you up. He's trying to set your direction. And what we need more than ever 
We need to get some clarity from God. We need to get some vision from God. And you're going to have to fight for it. Just like Daniel, he fasted for 21 days to get a message from God. There's a spirit that wants to keep you depressed, hopeless, suicidal, fearful, worried, full of anxiety, doubt, unbelief. And he knows, yes, you're a believer and you have all the potential in the world, but he knows this. If they never see it, it will never materialize. Before Jesus resurrected from the dead, he had a vision of dying and coming out of the tomb. He said it, he spoke it, and it manifested. Your family will never be saved. You'll never be on fire for God. You'll never be saved. You'll never overcome the addiction. You'll never prosper. You'll never overcome the poverty. You'll never overcome the depression until you finally get a dream that enough is enough. God, I'm tired of this mindset. I want a new life. Give me your mind. So what is prayer? It's a desired future result. What is prayer? A desired future result. I mean, what is goals? A desired future. What is it? And what does God promise? He will give you the desires of your heart. That word desires means requests, petitions, and prayers. And this is the last point. What is a goal? It's a prayer. A spiritual way to say goals is prayer. In other words, our prayer list is our goal list. My goals, I can tell you, 90%, 95% of my goals are all about you guys. The closer I get to the Lord, my dream and vision is just others. Now, the other 5 to 10% are goals like for me. But this is what I've learned. If my dreams can become God's dreams, my wishes and wants becomes God's desires as well. He gives it to me. Every single want I've ever wanted in life, as I saw God first, God has given me. I remember when I was young, I wanted a wife to love God. You know what I did? I started writing down some stuff. You know why I to, some of us can't receive something? You don't even have the faith to write it. Because you're, you're fearful of being disappointed. You got to write it. Have the guts. Well, I don't believe I can, I'm, I'm, I'm not a good guy. Stop it. You're a man of God. Shape up. I'm a, you're a woman of God. Shape up. Get ready to receive God's best. Man, well, why not this year? Amen. Come on. What is, what is a goal? It's a prayer. Simple, simple. Everyone who sets goals and prays receives. Matthew 7, 8. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. This is all the same. Everyone who asks for forgiveness is forgiven. Everyone who asks to be saved is saved. Everybody asks for joy, receives joy. Everybody that asks for help, receives help. Everybody asks for breakthrough, gets a breakthrough. Every, come on, everybody asks, come on. Every, everybody asks for victory, gets a victory. And come on, everybody that asks, come on, for a need to be met, gets that need met. Come on, everybody asks for help. Come on. God is just saying, everyone who asks, receives. And all we're saying, if you don't write nothing, you didn't ask. I went to the sushi place the other day. I went to all you can eat. I didn't know it was all you can eat. So they gave me a paper. And I only ordered two things. Because I was on a budget. So I was done. They go, is that all you want? I go, yeah, why? Because it's all you can eat. I go, oh, okay, I want some more. If that's the case, 
And maybe right now, some of you guys need to raise your vision because you are asking too low. And God has said, I brought you into this place for you to start dreaming bigger than you've been dreaming because I'm ready to give everyone who asks. And this is the last thing. Everyone who doesn't set goals and doesn't pray does not receive. I want 5,000 people to sell this car. Because I want 5,000 people blessed. If I were you, I'd bring people next to you. Because you know what? I'm going to show you how to set goals. Every goal I've ever sit, set in my life has been accomplished. I've set new goals that haven't been accomplished. But every goal that we've set, me and my wife, throughout the years, has come to pass. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm not nobody special. I just found out there's a secret to success. Get a vision from God, writing it down, and working on it. Come on. How many believe that God's going to show us how to get this thing done so you could be a key of breakthrough for your family and our neighborhoods and our community? In James 4, 2, we'll end it with this. You want things, but you don't get them. So you kill and are jealous of others. But you still can't get what, they, what you want. And I'm not saying that you're going to go out there and, and kill people. But some of us are killing people with our words because you're jealous of them. Putting them down thinking that's going to help you achieve your life. You could make your whole crusade about putting everybody else down, comparing yourself with everybody, but it doesn't fix your life. It keeps you in want still. But here's the problem why you don't get it. You argue and you fight and you still don't have it. You don't get what you want because you don't ask God. You don't get peace because you don't ask God. You don't get freedom because you don't ask God. You don't get a breakthrough because you don't ask God. You don't get provision because you don't ask God. Your family don't get saved because you're not even asking God. You're complaining about them, but you're not praying about them. Someone said, you don't get wisdom because you don't ask God. I got to say, please. I'm everywhere at once, and I'm available for anyone that's willing to dream. And this is what I promise you. I'll give you above and beyond whatever you could ask or think. But is there someone asking and thinking? I promise you more than enough. Let's give the Lord a hand if you receive this today. Let's all stand up. Online, we love you. Get here next Sunday, praise the Lord. But don't come with your COVID, though. <laughs> Amen. Now, I'm going to say there's COVID, and that's real. And, you know, there's a lot of people got it right now. And these, these are realities that we're facing. These are obstacles, just difficulties, trials. But don't get so wrapped up in what's happening in our world that you forget about God's vision for your life. COVID is not your vision. God has a vision for your life. We're going to pray for those that are sick. Amen. And we're going to pray for healing and protection for our family and our church and our, fa our relatives. We're going to pray for that. But when God gives you a vision and a dream, He's going to take care of you. In every way. Don't let fear take over. Don't let social issues take over. Don't let politics take over. You're a Christian before you're a Democrat or Republican. You're a Christian before you're black, white, Mexican, or whatever you are. Let's stay united, church. I need your help. And when I, the reason I say I need your help is because God's given us a big vision. I would love to be an army that walk in unity to this year. And all of us just do our part. That's it. And at the end of the year, could we celebrate? The biggest celebration we've ever had. As we're seeing thousands of people come to Jesus. That our church will double in size. And 10,000 people go through our discipleship classes and get baptized. And we'd see a revival start here in San Bernardino. 
with a whole bunch of regular people like you and I. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm just a regular guy. Too. I'm telling you the truth. I'm just a, me being up here speaking is a miracle. I was, I was at Cal State San Bernardino. I quit a class where they wanted me to do a speech. I'm not, I was so scared of talking. My first speech in the church, they, they invited me as a guest speaker. And I spoke for two minutes. I was so scared. I didn't even know how to start or finish. All I said was, that's it. And I just sat down. I was like this. And I was the guest speaker. And they were like, that's it? But, but, but you know what I had to do? Was fight through my, through my fears. And keep pressing, and keep pressing, and keep pressing, and keep pressing until the dream comes back. Come on, until the dream happens, until the vision comes to pass. Come on, you've been called to be a preacher. You've been called to be a prophet. You've been called, come on, to be a world changer. You've been called, come on, to be rich. And come on, you've been called to succeed. Walk according to your calling. You've been called to be an author. You've been called to be happy. Amen, come on. Some of you guys think it's like a sin to be happy. Like, if I'm happy, that's not spiritual. I'd rather just be sad and depressed and talk about the devil's always messing with me because I'm so holy. Stop it. No, you should be talking about the devil's underneath your feet. How you have one victory after another victory after another victory after another victory. Come on, is anybody ready to come on, take over some territory? Now, we're going to end it with a prayer. You don't receive because you don't ask. Some of us today, you need to pray to be saved. You need a new life. Because you won't be saved unless you ask me to save you. I'm the only savior. But I heard a, um, a, a little thing on Elon Musk this week. And the, and the title was, Elon Musk got saved. That's what they said. So I looked at the interview. And this is what it would happen. Elon Musk said this, which is one of the most brilliant minds in the world. He said this, I 100% agree with the teachings of Jesus Christ. He goes, everything he taught is 100% correct to live a full life. Do as unto those if you have them done to you. Forgive, love your neighbor, love your enemies. He was just claiming, he was quoting everything that Jesus said. And then he said at the end, and he goes, and if he's saving, well, I guess I'll take it. We know Elon's not saved yet. But he knows something. That the way and the teachings of Jesus are the way to live a full life. Joe Rogan, which is the number one bo bo um, podcaster in the world, this week said the same thing. He goes, I'm not sure about Jesus resurrected from the dead yet. He goes, but I agree with Jesus' teachings. In one week, people that are influencers are mentioning Jesus and they're saying, after we've studied everything, we're finding out that still this is the best plan. I said, Pastor, what would you do with Joe Rogan and Elon, if I was, if you there, I go, Elon, Joe, would you agree that his way is the best way? We already told you we did, so why not follow him? Why not follow him if you're already following him? Come on. All we're saying is stop doing it your way and just come on, follow God's way. Now, you need salvation. Today's your day. You need freedom. You got to ask for it. If you want to go into 2022 with a secret addiction, you can. But don't, you, but don't let your pride stop you. Get your breakthrough today. If you're depressed, he said, man, I've come up for prayer. Keep coming until you get your breakthrough. If your marriage is a mess, why don't you ask for restoration today? Today's your day. If you're not sure you have eternal life, everyone who asks for eternal life gets it. Everyone who asks to be saved gets saved. Everyone who asks for freedom gets freedom. Everyone who asks for joy gets joy. And maybe you need healing today of your emotions, your mind, your broken heart, your body. Today's your day.
Give your life to Jesus. Make it a goal. See, no one is ever going to serve God till they make up their mind, I'm going to serve God. If that's you, I need, I need a breakthrough today. I cannot leave here the same person. I need God's help today. Jesus, take over my life. Forgive me. Set me free. Heal me. Everyone who asks, receives. Those that don't ask, don't get nothing. You can leave here with your weed. You can leave here with your alcohol. You can leave with all the numbing ages you want. You can leave here with your anger. You can leave here with your unforgiveness. You can leave here with your sexual, uh, 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 your, uh, sexual morality. You can leave here with your porn. You can leave with all that ugly darkness, the depression, the torment. You can leave here just the way you came in. But I found out it was all you can eat sushi. And then you leave here hungry. All I'm saying, if you need a breakthrough today, I want you to leave your seat. Come over, come forward real quick. Come forward. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. And if, come on, if God's touching your heart, you got to learn how to respond to that. The beginning of getting great vision is the nudge of Jesus, the whisper of Jesus, the touch of Jesus. Right now, if I feel like God's talking to me, if you even think he might be talking to you, you got to come up. Come on, I, I need to be saved. I need a new start. I need a new beginning. There has to be something better than the life I'm living. I love you. Come on, God wants to heal your broken heart. Leave it here. Leave it here. Come on, let's give them a hand as they're coming up. Come on, there's still people coming up. Come on, church. Let's, come on, let's celebrate like heaven. Come on, that's somebody's son. That's somebody's daughter. That's someone's mama. Come on, let's leave the old life behind. There's a new life. There's a new vision. There's a new future. God is saying, let me direct you. Leave the hindrance behind. Something's been holding me back. It's not going to hold me back anymore. I'm taking action today. I'm not going to hold me back anymore. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to live for God. It's going to be your day. New start. Let's do this. Proud of every one of you. Proud of you. I don't even know how many people are up here, but I don't know. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Now, we're going to pray. Uh, church. Just so you know, we're a church that believes in the power of God. So we got to get over this so we can see that. I, of course, we're going to be as timely as we can. But God, see, God wants sometimes work out of your clock. Come on. He wants to do something big in their lives. And just because you got your breakthrough doesn't mean, come on, we can't fight for someone else's breakthrough. So church, this is an important time for us to fight. Come on, we're not no clock in, clock out church. We're a Holy Spirit filled church. We believe in the power of God. Come on, we believe in living outside the box. Get ready. Church, are we ready to build some endurance? We gotta learn how to wait upon the Lord. Pray. Amen. How many wanna be a part of a church like that though? Come on, how many wanna be a part of a church that, come on, let's go, let's get them. Whatever it takes, let's pray right now. Um, I need like a hundred more workers up here. Leaders, if you're a P12 leader, I need some prayer up here. I want to make sure every person has a, someone to pray with. We're right now missing another 50, I don't know, 30, I don't know what they are. But if you're a P12 leader, you're, you need to be up here praying for somebody. I want to make sure everybody's covered. And nobody, everybody matters here. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Proud of you. Proud of you. Freedom in the name of Jesus. 
We break every stronghold of depression, every stronghold of poverty, every stronghold of addiction, every stronghold of fear, every stronghold of worry in the name of Jesus, every stronghold of, the, of hindrance. I can, it seems like I can't get forward, move forward. Something's trying to hold me back in the name of Jesus. I command you to let him go. Let's pray. We're going to believe in, we're going to believe that you're going to bat, get baptized in the Holy Spirit today. Some of you guys are going to speak in tongues for the first time. Say, Pastor, you believe in this? Oh, yes, we do. We believe in the full power of God to help you accomplish everything God has for you. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray together. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. This Sunday, the first Sunday of 2022, from this day forward, I commit to following you for the rest of my life. I know I'm a sinner. I repent today. I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm tired of the pain. I'm tired of the emptiness. I'm tired of the addiction. Help me, Lord. Save me. I believe you suffered. You died to pay the price for all the wrong I've done. But I also believe you conquered death to give me a new life. Forgive me. Set me free. And fill me now with your Holy Spirit. From this day forward, I make a decision. I will follow you for the rest of my life with your strength. Use me, Lord, to reach out to others that are hurting just like I was. Today's my day. I'm saved. I'm born again. And I have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. We're going to pray for you right now. We're going to pray for freedom. We're going to pray for deliverance. We're going to get your name and number. We're going to sign you up for Holy Wars. This Wednesday, church, do me a favor. Please, let's show up together. It means the world to me that we show up together unified in our fast. Let's fill this house to capacity and worship God together. And let's start declaring war on the enemy together. We love you. Need prayer? We want to make sure you stay right here. We're going to pray with you. Make sure everybody's covered up here. Let's go. Let's go. My